Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm super excited because we're taking a look at something super special. Now, you probably all know him. The legendary FPV reviewer and dentist, Kebab FPV. Today, we're going to be taking a look at his prototype 5 inch frame. So let's go. Alright guys, so we're going to take a look at the frame in a second, but first I just wanted to say a quick thanks to FPV Exchange, my sponsor who sent over this frame to take a look at. A lot of you guys probably already know about this website, but FPV Exchange is basically a website that puts all the hundreds of FPV vendors into one spot, so if you search for an item, it'll bring up all that item from every different vendor and you can pick and choose and compare prices. At the same time, you can also sell and buy stuff, kind of like an eBay, but for FPV. So this website's building a really good FPV community and bringing a lot of things together that we've needed for a while. So big thanks to FPV Exchange for sending this over. And now, let's take a look at it. Alrighty guys, so here's the frame. It's time to unbox her and open it up. So, first thing, is obviously you have to consider it is a prototype so it doesn't have any outside packaging or anything like that but that is completely fine first thing we've got is an FPV cycle strap because this is obviously Kebab's company so that's what it what it is but that's a nice strap now getting into the parts we've got a nice like accordion packaging for all this stuff and here's all the screws we need I don't know what screws like this, this um, like M2 stuff is going to be used for, but here's all the screws conveniently packaged. Then it looks like we've got the side plates for the camera and something else back here which I'm not sure. Next we've got the, or the arms also nicely packaged and they look pretty thick which is nice. Definitely sturdy arms. Um, and then we've got the last bottom plates and top plates. This is probably the X brace for like the arms. Looks kind of interesting though. So yeah, pretty nice packaging and there isn't too many parts in here and everything looks pretty nice and neat. So yeah, for the most part, that was nice. Okay guys, so now I'm going to build up the frame. It doesn't come with any directions because it's a prototype, but even if it did, I'd try to assemble without, just because I feel like trying to figure out the frame and assembling it kind of gets you a first feel of how intuitive or simple it is. Um, and it's also just fun to try to figure stuff out. So I'm going to assemble it, and after that, we'll take a first look at it and see what it's like. So, let's go. Okay guys, the frame is done and it is now assembled. So first let's just take a look at it. We've got this cross plate down here that connects the arms and these are all individual arms that interlock with each other. Each one is the same so if you'd have to replace an arm, you only need one type of arm to replace each one. Each arm locks in with two screws so that's pretty convenient if you need to replace one and none of the arms interfere with the stack or anything like that. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and they seem pretty rigid in here. Also, the arms are pretty thick, as I mentioned before, which is nice because you want something thick. 
and at the same time they're thin though so it doesn't take up too much weight and they're tapered for extra strength. They also have these devil horn type things here to protect the motors which is a nice touch. And then coming up it's the bottom plate that we have in here. It's got a pretty odd shape as it like bubbles out some but um, that's a decent bottom plate and it's structuralized by this extra piece here. Um, after that we have these weird side plates on here. I mean they're not that weird. I've seen them on other frames. Actually most of the frames I've flown before have these. Uh, I like this for holding cameras because it seems to protect them pretty well and it has the standoff here in the front. Also another thing to mention is down here there's this odd triangle piece which um, stabilizes that and it screws into the bottom with this screw and then it has these two little pieces that interlock and it actually has standoffs on each side which is pretty nice that probably adds a little bit of structure structural integrity and then up top here we have some flush screws so you can put on a battery pad which is always a good touch um, and yeah we have a lot of space up here then if you look in the inside you can see it's pretty squish there's a lot of it's not that much room but a good feature about this is you've got full size stack all the way from the smallest to the biggest size mounting holes in the front and the back so you've got a lot of space in here which is pretty nice another thing I forgot to mention is you also have another pair of screws right here uh, screw holes for standoffs I didn't put them on because that would interfere with the stack up front here but I guess you could if you wanted to or you could use that to mount a GoPro with these four screws so that's just a basic overview of the frame now I'll get into a few nitpicks and things I liked about the frame so first off let me just tell you this took over a half an hour to build and even if it's a prototype or any frame it really shouldn't take that long to build the main reason why it took that long is because of these press nuts in here um, there's about 10 of them along the frame and the tolerances overall are just way too tight for each one I had to scrape out some of the hole with a a knife just to get it in some then I'd have to take a screwdriver and screw it in to lock it in and then I'd have to use my vise and push as hard as I can to get each one in and I didn't even get most of it in that well so just because of those alone it took that long so if the if those could be pre-installed or the tolerances could be made a little less tight then that would have made the building experience way more enjoyable that was like one of the big pet peeves I had about this and that's it is just because it took way too long to build um besides that like I said the tolerances were just pretty difficult and it was hard to get everything into place now um another thing that this is just a little thing they provide you with a strap which is an, a decent strap but they only provide you with one so maybe in the future some people like more hold on their battery and don't mind about the weight so they like to use two straps and I'm personally on that side so if they provide straps maybe just provide two so that the people who only want to use one can and just save the other one but then the people who want to use two will have two straps provided so that would be nice um, besides that um, one other thing I noticed as far as like if you want to put a digital system in here these press nuts yet again Interfere if you want to put the full-size air unit back here You can't really fit it in that well, which is kind of disappointing The the Vista unit would definitely fit in and you could actually mount it with the stack screws in This stack which would be a nice strong mounting But if they had made a little bit more space with those screws you could have fit the full-size air unit which you can. So it's not too many things I didn't like about it. It's just that one big thing of like building it took a really long time and that was kind of frustrating. Now also if you can see up over here this is all the extra parts I had with it. Um, I had a few extra standoffs and a few extra screws which is nice that they provide you with extra stuff and then they also provide you with a full bunch of motor screws which is nice that doesn't usually come with a frame and they provide you with a full set of stack screws for a bigger mounting size and then they provide you with like eight um, smaller M2 or something uh, those size stack screws with the lock nuts for each of them so 
that is nice to have all those extra screws in there. That's a really nice added touch. Um, and yeah, that's basically all I have to say about the frame just right off the bat looking at it. It's a pretty sturdy construction overall and I, you know, I like it overall. It's just that one thing of building it and how long it took. It took a while. Another thing to note that I forgot is these arms are really wide apart. So if you have your ESC and stack up front, this one arm is going to have to run motor wires all the way up to there. You may need extension like to add some extra wires on um, because I don't know if wires could make it all the way up. But that is one other thing. So your wires are going to have to travel pretty far up with how wide this is. But I assume that also probably helps it quite a bit. And lastly, another thing that I heard from FPV Exchange and some people have that, that have built this up is that the camera adjustability is not there that well. Like, it doesn't adjust well. So once I build this up with with what electronics I put in it, I'll, I'll be able to tell you also. But I heard that the camera adjustability might need to be fixed a little too. So yeah, not too bad overall. Um, and it looks like it, it's, it's going to be a decent frame. Alright guys, so there you go. There's my first impressions on this prototype frame from uh, Kebab FPV and FPV Cycle. Thanks again to FPV Exchange for sending that over. Um, I'm not sure when this actual frame will come out or like a revision of this 5 inch frame from FPV Cycle. In fact, I don't know if it even will come out, but um, I got this sent a little bit ago. I've been pretty busy. so. Um, I haven't reviewed it till now, so maybe it's in the works while I was working on my review and waiting. Either way, I will be building this up hopefully and doing a maiden flight and all that just to test it and just because why not try out some new frames. So look forward to that coming in the future and a bunch of other FPV videos as stuff is starting to warm out, up um, out here in Maine. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.